This podcast is the result of my passion for languages and for talking to people. I have conversations with language professionals who are willing to share their experience. We focus on their work, but also on how their love for languages has shaped their personal lives. I started my career as a researcher in terminology, but I found my passion for working directly with clients when I lived in the United States and started working as a language consultant for global companies like Sony, Apple, and Google. When I came back to Europe, I was introduced to the world of LSPs, where I had multiple roles, project manager, vendor manager, and terminologist. Now that I am fully dedicated to my own projects, I provide language services in English and Portuguese, mentoring and consulting for the localization industry, and of course, I'm also a podcaster. Find out more on LinkedIn or Instagram and get in touch if you'd like to explore how I can help you with your projects. I am Rita Prazeres Gonçalves, the language worker. Hi, everybody. So today I have three guests. Everybody knows I'm into having multiple guests these days because I think it's so much fun. So we have Kitty, Lucy, and Kate. I just met them. It's true, just uh, the last 15 minutes or so. So we have been chatting a little bit. I found out that Lucy is uh, almost a professional athlete in football. Uh, <laughs> <soccer>. <laughs> we will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but they're here because they are, I guess, the co-owners owners of Leaf uh, Translations, right? So they're going to explain to us all of this. But before we get into the details, let's just hear a brief presentation of each one of you because, you know, just, just your, your name and uh, where you're from and, you know, that's it, like the basics, and then we'll go into specifics. Okay, so I'll go into the order of my, my screen, and so I'll we'll start with uh, Kitty. Hello, I'm Kitty. Um, I'm a project manager at Leaf Translations. I'm from Darlington, which is in the northeast of England. Um, and I met Lucy when I was at York University studying French and Italian. Hmm. And she was she was studying with you? She was your colleague or she was doing something no. else? Oh, no. <laughs> um, no, Lucy was already, already owned Leaf Translations and was looking for an intern, um, which I applied for. And through that, I ended up working doing work experience with Lucy at Leaf mm -hmm. um, and just continued from there really. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So in that case, Lucy, let's hear from Lucy. Hi, I'm Lucy. Um, I'm from York in the north of England. Um, I'm a, well, I was, am still, I guess, a German to English translator. Um, so I worked as a freelancer for a long, long time. And then when I had kids and was on mat leave, I was like, kind of want to do something a little bit different now. So set up Leaf Translations and um, yeah, I guess the rest is history. I guess we'll talk yeah. a bit more about that. In a, in a <laughs> and then we have our lovely Kate. Hello. Um, yes, I'm Kate. I'm also from York. Um, I've been working for Leaf Translations for just over two years. Um, I'm also a primary school teacher um, with a specialism in English. Mm. So I'm, I feel like I'm new-ish, but um, yeah. Okay. Well, if, if you I feel like it, it's because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so in that case, let's let's hear from, from Lucy, right? How long have you been in the business? What did you study? Let's go back a little bit and, and hear about your background. Let's call it that. Okay. So um, I so when I was at secondary school, so age 11 to 16, I guess I did um, French and German and um, really enjoyed German. I had the same French teacher for three years and just got a bit bored of French. So I ended up dropping it and, but really loved German. Somehow it just kind of clicked in my brain. Um, so I did German at A-level until I was 18. And then I couldn't really decide what to do at university. And I thought, I just want to keep learning German. And if I do that, I get to live in Germany for a year. So I ended up studying German and philosophy at Edinburgh University. And then when I graduated, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I felt like my German wasn't really good enough to have a degree in it. So I was like, right, I'm going to go back to Germany to improve my German. Um, I got a DAAD scholarship and did a master's degree in a very small town called Fulda, right in the middle of Germany, near Frankfurt. And I studied intercultural communication and European studies. Um, 
and then lived there for two years and then moved to Berlin. Um, during, uh, I should say during my master's degree, I did an internship at a big translation agency in Germany, which kind of mm. gave me an insight into working within an agency. And then they basically said, we will, we'd like to keep working with you. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll do some freelance work. Mm. Um, and then also when I was in Fulda, I was basically the only British person at the university and they wanted their website translating into English. So they were like, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, so that was kind of my first translation job, which I pretty much got because I was the only British person mm -hmm. at the university. But you know, I know how it is when you're the only one of something of your kind somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a really good experience. And I really enjoyed the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we moved to Berlin, I worked in house at another agency. And then um, in 2008, moved back to the UK with my partner. And I just carried on doing freelance translation. Um, that was pretty much until 2017. Mm -hmm. So and when you were I, working as a freelancer, what kind of translation <clears throat> did you do? Did you specialize in a vertical or was it more, you know? It was very, general? I will take on anything pretty much. Um, so I really enjoyed, I've always really liked writing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, the, I was, I would say I much preferred sort of the marketing style um, where you need to be a good writer, where the less technical stuff but i did get sent a lot of technical stuff as well mm. um but i definitely much preferred the marketing and sort of the tour tourism stuff as well um so then when i set up leaf that they were kind of the natural things to focus on mm -hmm. um yeah i think like to be a good marketing translator you need to be able to write and if you can write then it kind of naturally makes you a better marketing translator so that was kind of kind of fell into that, that mm -hmm. side so did you start having your direct clients or did you always work for big companies or small companies, more in Germany, more in the UK? How did that go in terms of clients? So it was pretty much um, all companies in Germany, um, agencies. Um, I had a couple of direct clients, just sort of random, you know, how it is through people that you know or th through people that mention you. Um, but it was pretty much agencies for a long, long time. And then 2017, um, I kind of decided, okay, I want to start working with direct clients now. And because of Brexit as well, I was a bit like, um, all my work comes from Germany and no one knows what's going to happen mm. to trade of services between the UK and Germany. So I was like, okay, I need to get some UK clients just kind of as a backup. Um, so mm. that was another of the driving forces, I guess, to kind of try and get um, some work from within the UK. Um, yeah, and then kind of just grew from there initially leaf translations was just going to be german to english translations because that was what i did i didn't ever have any plans to grow an agency it was like i just want to get direct clients essentially right. and then started getting inquiries for other languages and then i was like well i know other translators that can do this so why not and then yeah it's just kind of grown from there yeah okay so let's hear from that we we'll stop here and then we come back with, <laughs> yeah. with kate <laughs> so kate how was it so you, you didn't really study translation or language as such or you did like you knew you wanted to be a teacher no. my story seems very different <laughs> to lucy <laughs> that's so, great <laughs> um, yeah so i did um french at a level which feels like a very long time ago um and then i did a four-year teaching degree in nottingham in england um and then, yeah, I've been a teacher, a primary school teacher for about 14, 15 years. Um, and then I've had two children very close together um, fairly recently. So I've got a 10-month-old baby and a, a two-year-old. Um, mm -hmm. And so I started working um, for LEAF when I was on maternity leave um, a couple of from years school. ago. Um, pardon? From school, maternity leave from school. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm certainly leave from primary school. So I was a full-time mm -hmm. teacher and then I'm now a part-time teacher. Um, so I, I did an English specialism as part of my teaching degree and I'm the English lead um, at my primary school. So I've got, yeah, I've got that passion for languages, but not the uh, a specific um, language like Lucy has German. and Or so you thought, so. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Very, uh, very basic French and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I can get by. But um, yes, I d I'm the office manager. I don't think I said that earlier. So I do oh. a lot of the admin and uh, all the invoices and all of that. So yes, yeah, so I, I just currently work one day a week for Leaf Translations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
yeah it's a very nice background. Yeah, yeah for sure i mean if you would be exactly the same person that would be hard i guess yeah <laughs> even with friends sometimes let alone with co-workers so yeah i get it <laughs> so, yeah that's great so our kitty how did you get into languages in the first place very similar to lucy i studied languages at secondary school i did french spanish and italian um which carried on to a level where i did french and spanish because italian wasn't an option we didn't have the chance to do that um italian was the language that i wanted to study the most because i have family living in italy so mm. i visited there quite often which is maybe where the passion for languages started um wanting to communicate with friends there um so when i was choosing what to study at university i chose to do French and Italian ab initio, so starting out from scratch at university, um, although I did have a slight knowledge of it already. Um, I chose French over Spanish because Spanish and Italian are really similar and I thought that could get quite confusing, but I did pick up a module of Spanish in my final year of uni just to try and keep it up, although it's quite hard doing three languages at the same time mm -hmm. um so while i was at university this was in york studying french and italian i had the chance to do a year abroad as well um so i did my semester in italy where i had modules in translation so i had the chance to get some experience in translation learn the techniques um and a lot more of the theory I then went to a university in France for the second part of my year abroad and carried on with some translation modules there. But then I had to leave France because that was when we had the COVID uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I came home at that point, finished off my degree at home. Um, and then during that time was when I met Lucy, got some experience at Leaf Translations and um, learned a lot more about the industry there. Then in this most recent year, I, no, not this most recent year, the year before, I did my master's degree um, in translation mm. studies. Uh, so I spent a year at university getting experience in translating, learning all the theories. Um, and I started full time with Lucy in October just gone so I've been at Leaf Translations for a few months now ah that's so cute <laughs> <laughs> new stuff I know so Lucy then you were like okay maternity leave or I have my kids now Brexit is happening what were your first steps in order to become let's say a company owner or wasn't that the idea I mean did you feel the need to set up a, a company from the get-go or were you like I'm gonna continue being a freelancer, but I'm going to be more mindful of where my clients are. So what was the the thinking process? So um, I was like, I'll create a website, I'll choose a name, come up with a logo, create a website, and that's it. Then that, then I've set up a company and that's great. And it will all just happen. You know. Okay. That, and it did, that right? Age old <laughs> thing where you're like, yeah, I'll just create a website. And then there you go. I've got a company. Clients will come flooding in. Of course, it doesn't work. As like they that. do, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, in 2017, that was when I chose the name um, and set up the website, spent ages doing all this, um, but essentially carried on working as a freelancer for two two more years, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so we specialize in SEO translation. Um, so, I should probably mention that before. My husband um, has worked in the SEO industry for like 15 years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those kind of quite natural inquisitive people. So I've just basically quizzed him. I like to understand how other things work. So just over that time, I've just constantly been asking questions. And obviously with having our own website, I wanted to learn SEO to improve our own website and the amount of traffic we were getting and all that. So, mm -hmm. um, so through one of his contacts, um, it was an SEO agency in the UK and they approached me asking if, and we could help them with some translation and some keyword research for a few different languages. 
Um, and that was kind of the first step, I guess, into SEO translation and into dealing with larger direct clients on larger projects in different languages. Mm. Um, and then the beginning of 2020, I was like, right, this is the year I'm going to properly like push myself out of my comfort zone, um, try and like grow the business properly. Um, the first, I was still with an eye on the SEO translation, but to be honest, by then it was more, I was more thinking about tourism um, mm. because I, I live in York and York gets a lot of international tourism. Um, so it seemed like a kind of natural step. And then obviously the pandemic happened and no one traveled. And so <laughs> tourism as a vertical was like, no, that's not going to happen. So mm-hmm. I basically had to pivot and SEO was like the natural place to look to because of, well, the clients we already had and um, my growing network within that industry. Um, so, yeah, so it kind of took a long time. I feel a bit like 2017 to 2019, I was pretty much a freelancer with a website mm-hmm. and a company name, but not really a company. Um, and then it was only kind of 2019 onwards um, that I started viewing it more as that I became a business owner, not just not, I shouldn't say not just, but not a freelancer anymore. Like I want to actually right. grow, grow the business. Um, also kind of inspired to increase my positive impact. So I'm quite passionate about sustainability and ethical business. Mm. And um, as a freelancer, I mean, there's not a lot, you don't have much of an impact. I mean, obviously like the people you talk to, but as a, a company, the bigger you get, the more influence you have on the people around you, on competitors, on clients, on um, just the general public. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can do more, you can inspire more people, you can instigate more change. And so that was another kind of motivating factor. Um, also like personal development. Like I, when I look back the journey from the freelancer to where I am now, mm-hmm. and hopefully in five years time, it's the, the company development mirrors personal development. And I find that really, I don't know. I just, I love it. I love kind of the steps forward and, and the growth Mm -hmm. So what did you do when you were faced with the idea that you had to work with other people, as in hire other people to work with you? I I suppose the first step was to get uh, freelancers, right, from other languages or from the same languages. I mean, did you become more of a project manager in that moment and hired people to do the linguistic work as such? Or how did you do it that first time around? (laughs) Yeah, so um, I basically, I was pretty much a, I liked like a freelance recluse for like my until pretty much 2017. I didn't know any other translators at all. Like I wasn't on LinkedIn. Mm. I knew I literally I didn't know any other translators, and I I didn't even really feel the need to. Like I had my clients in Germany, and I was like, well, I don't I don't need to do any more. I didn't have any grand ambitions. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and then a friend of a friend um, who's a translator, Kate Stansfield. Um, I don't know if you know her. She's very big on green and sustainability. Um, she, um, we, we basically met and had a chat. And um, I think through her, I realized that she is quite, it's quite nice to talk to other translators <laughs> and like to forge a We're like, why haven't I done this before? Like, it's actually quite a nice thing to do. Um, and then through her, so she, she was active in the YTI, which is the York, Yorkshire Translators and Interpreters Network. Um, so I kind of joined that um and then the iti as well and joined that as well and just kind of grown a network of translators through that um so then when i received projects for different languages it was only natural to look to my network and be like well i know people that can do it um Mm -hmm. and i trusted them like it's yeah i mean there is an element of it's my baby i don't want to share and you do kind of have to get over that but um that process looking back it felt quite a natural process and then um taking kitty on so from work experience and then yeah that's what i was going to ask next so this yeah. is a whole other story because you were used to working with uh, freelancers now for i guess a period of time but now you decided that other things or other people were needed near you or in the in the mix to make things yeah. you know go smoother i suppose so you started from from both kate and kitty you started with kitty right first yeah, so um, I I still do a lot. We so we still get quite a lot of work from Germany, and I really enjoy translating. So I still do quite a lot of that myself. Um, and then mm-hmm. with all the other clients, um, it became 
very stressful trying to manage all that myself um so kitty was working freelance whilst doing her master's degree mm -hmm. and um she just I'd, had been brilliant at everything i'd set her since um since she started as work experience candidate and um and yeah it just kind of made sense so for kitty to take on more and more project management um and then it got to the point she graduated from her degree and um we were taking on more and more clients and i realized actually if i keep doing this a i'm going to burn out b i'm going to get really frustrated because i can't actually i didn't have any time to work on the business i was so busy being stressed with all the project management and trying because to do like i always say it's two different brains right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one for language work is not the same for the business of language right so it's yeah, a different exactly. brain yeah um and i was like actually it makes sense then kitty can join and take on a lot of the project management and then that can free up some of my time to then grow the business and then keep progressing leaf translations um Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Kate, um, so Kate um, joined, when did you join, Kate? 2022. 2022. Mm. Um, started doing just sort of admin tasks, but it's kind of grown and is now sort of the office manager. Um, and that's been a big help as well, just to, again, relieve some of the, some of those tasks. So I just don't need to think about them anymore. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been amazing. So it is, a, it was a bit of a leap. Um but it's all worked out really well because they're both awesome. Yeah, I can only imagine. So, Kate, how did you feel coming into this strange, like I call it the dark side, right? <laughs> <laughs> when I try to bring my friends, when I do bring my friends, like Kirsty Wolf and other friends into our, you know, world. So it's the dark side, I call it. No, but it's a lie because it's very bright. Uh, <laughs> but how did you feel about, you know, getting to know the business? Because, I mean, as office manager, you have to deal with, the ins and outs of the business. No, basically, you somehow had to get some sort of a crash course on how this whole thing works. Because I mean, Lucy probably hasn't been as long as I have. I don't know. I have been in the business for about 25 years. <laughs> Quickly trying to do some maths. Yeah, I'm 18 years, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so we've been here and, and looked at the history and we kind of have seen the trends and why it is the way it is these days and why not and blah, blah, blah. But how was it for me, for you coming from a whole other perspective of language, right? That's why I call all the people who work in languages, language, wor language workers, right? Because that's what they are. But this is a specific part or type of language work. So how was it to get to know the industry, which you had to do in order to do the job that you do these days? Good question. Um, do you know what? I'm not just saying this because Lucy and Kitty are here, but I absolutely love it. Um, I've had to learn a lot, um, learning bits on the job, learning lots from Kitty and Lucy, and they've been really helpful. But yeah, I do I do really enjoy it. It's been nice to sort of get my teeth into something a bit different. I mean, there's aspects from my teaching career that are really helpful in terms of like writing blog posts, proofreading, um, I think we're all with the English doing like the grammar side of things as well so there's bits that have been that you know transferable skills I've been able to use True. um but a lot of it I think it's it was mainly the terminology initially that I was a bit like oh what does this mean but just from asking and I feel like I've picked up things quite quickly and um yeah I, I really enjoy it I like having the sort of mix of doing the teaching but then also being involved with leaf translations as well so it was, yeah, I guess to start off with, it was a bit daunting because I was in the middle of maternity leave. I felt like my brain wasn't functioning quite as well as it normally does. But um, yeah, then taking on a completely new job. Um, but yeah, it's been really good. I, I do really enjoy it. Yeah, but it's true that our brains, when we have kids, I mean, I went through the same. It took me years. <laughs> no, not years, but it's ages. A memory. <laughs> yes, memory to get, to get out of the I baby brain, as I call it, because he was like, I was so, so I'm usually super energetic and all that. Everybody was like, what the hell? Of course, I was a, a pandemic pregnant, right? A full blown, the, I was three months pregnant when the, when the pandemic happened. So ah. I, I, the whole pregnancy, I was under that spell, right? But it was wow, like my okay. brain definitely yeah. wasn't functioning. And also the staying at home, like especially being pregnant, I couldn't be out and about with everybody because we didn't mm -hmm. know this, we didn't know that. Well, So, I mean, I understand it takes a long time for us to recover from the baby brain. But then a strange phenomenon happened. And I'm sure that's what happened to you both too because of how you changed things after pregnancy, right? Is that all of a sudden you come back 
not as you were before, but with a lot more <laughs> energy and focus and goals. And it was insane to me, right? So I was like, oh, this is how it goes. This is all of a sudden, it was like all the ideas I had had all my life were coming back to me and I needed to do something about them. So that's why I also quit my job when that happened, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's not that I changed industries, obviously, I've always done this, but it's like I felt this new or renewed energy in order to take on brand new projects or at least from other perspectives. So I do understand that this is a moment where we're like, okay, all of a sudden we go away for a minute or parts of our brain just go on a vacation. At least that was not what happened. That's what happened for me. And then when I came back, I was like ready for a lot more things than before, but it did take me a while. So I, I get it that now your brain is much more, right? <laughs> I think maternity leave is a good time. I mean, I found it's a good time to be reflective and actually think, well, what do I want to do going forward? And life is going to be different. And that's why I think it's nice to have been given this opportunity and to, yeah, to try something different that I've actually, yeah, I really, really enjoy it. And doing something a bit different has been great. Mm. And seeing in the time that I've been at Leaf, it's only been two years, but to see how it's sort of evolved and where we're heading is really, really exciting as well. Yeah, because it's a really fast time, I suppose, right? And it's it's been, there was a period where things didn't change this much, this quick, right? But now this is how it goes for everything that we do. So this is no exception, I suppose. So Kitty, when did you actually start translating while you were doing your degree? W was not already for, uh, for LEAF, was it? The first few projects that um, you had? I did a few projects with leaf for translation i haven't done anything separate from leaf other than mm. as part of my studies mm -hmm. um so we spent a lot of time during my masters practicing different translations different mm. areas subjects um so, so we had that technical means that perks, you kind of had a mentor from the get-go right yeah exactly. which is i've never seen that <laughs> yeah i'm very lucky <laughs> So I've, ne I've never heard anyone say that, you know, their first few experiences were already within a context where there's someone there to help. So, I mean, did you discuss this with your classmates or did you have these conversations? Did you show them how lucky you were or what's the story? Did you did you mention this whole situation? And they were like, oh, my God, I wish I had the same. How was it? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people that I was studying with at uni knew that I had this connection with Leaf already. Um, and I mean, I didn't talk about it too much because it is, it's difficult to get started in this industry from seeing everyone else's situations. Mm -hmm. Um, especially as a freelancer, it seems as though it's hard to really get kick started until you know people. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I was very fortunate to find this work experience with Leaf. Mm -hmm. So how did you that feel the, the environment with the other students? How did they feel? Were they fearful? Were they excited about, you know, facing the real world once they were done with their degrees? <laughs> it was definitely a mix. I think on the for the most part, everyone was excited to get started. Um, I mean, everyone there loved translating. They were there for that reason. So... Um, everyone was definitely ready to get started in the industry. Mm. Um, but it's just knowing what those next steps are after leaving that I think was the scary part for most people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that I talk to, and sometimes I go to university and, and talk to the students, especially in their MAs and things like that. So they're, they're kind of don't know what to expect of the real world because I guess whatever you do at university usually doesn't really match with what happens in the real world. I mean, you having Lucy around you, did you feel safer? Did you feel like you you had a better grasp of what the future could hold for you? Or were you also fearful and hesitant? Yeah, definitely had... Um a lot more hope for after graduating. Um, there is obviously the element of fear, of the unknown, not knowing how it's all going to play out. But um, I was definitely excited to get started and 
continue the journey with Leaf because we had spoken previously that it, that could have been an option once I'd finished. Mm. So knowing that already was definitely a massive help for my situation. Yep, I bet. So if everybody listen, listening will be like, oh, that's so lucky, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's not just lucky, though. Like, she, it's, yeah, I there's mean, a reason yeah, why she's the one. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> the opportunity, like, to go from the work experience and then to, like, the journey. Like, I mean, it's also, yeah, it's mm. a lot of hard work. And speaking and, of journey, yeah. these days, what happens at Leaf? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we are. Um, we, yeah, we're growing, basically. So since Kitty started in October, so not that long ago, although it has gone so fast, like the last few months, I don't know what's happening. But um, yeah, we're really busy, which is great. Um, obviously, with a lot of talk in the industry, a lot of negativity. But um, yeah, it's going really well. Like We're kind of focusing on just being the best that we can, um, providing the best service that we can, learning all the time, like massive believer in moving forward, learning, developing, um, keep pushing yourself, pushing you, yourself out your comfort zone and just kind of seeing where it leads. Um, so yeah, we work with lots of really great clients who keep coming back and keep recommending us to other people, which has mm. been amazing. Um, so our growth has all pretty much been organic, just through word of mouth, essentially. Um, so yeah, just, um, yeah, we're, we're busy in a good way um and yeah just really excited about what the what the future holds um mm -hmm. hot off the press news we've just become an accredited member of the atc and the association of translation companies in the uk we just found out yesterday that we're now an accredited member so that's really exciting. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's really exciting too so it just feels like we're making lots of step steps in the right direction and that's kind of the plan to just keep keep going and see see where the journey leads i guess Mm -hmm. So what kind of clients do you work with at the moment? Is it like big clients, direct clients, some LSPs, people from the UK, free people from Germany, people from all over Europe? Where yeah. are they and who are they? Well, in abstract terms, obviously. Yeah, um, it's a real mix, to be honest. So we still have quite a lot of clients from, from Germany. Um, so we work some direct clients that like we work with um, Vivani, who's an ethical chocolate vegan chocolate brand i know with my favorite yeah. chocolate with chili come on i know yeah. all about it. <laughs> amazing chocolate yeah and um, so they're one of our long-standing clients Client. <laughs> <laughs> we um we also work with um from germany a big um digital marketing agency on a number of their different clients um mm -hmm. and then in the uk we work with um a lot of seo agencies on their clients so that's quite cool because we get to work on some really big accounts which um otherwise we probably wouldn't get as such a small translation company so it's really exciting that we get to work on some so instead of a translation stuff. agency you have a marketing agency that you work with, <laughs> or, or some yeah yeah essentially mm -hmm. um and then direct clients as well um in the uk so ethical ethical businesses and um some local york businesses um, there's quite a big mix, to be honest. We so are, when you I've present been... yourself, you already say that if you're not ethical, you're not <laughs> my client. <laughs> no, we'd, we'd, I mean, we, there's certain areas that we wouldn't work with, yeah. but we don't only, we don't say we're only working with you if you're ethical, for example. Yeah. Like, mm. um, I mean, yeah, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> to, to a degree, actually, I should rephrase that. I think we only work with good com like companies that we like. So in that sense, ethical in that sense, but not necessarily like only like sort of fair trade or organic mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah unlike a lot of, so i didn't actually realize this until i went to the atc conference in november that a lot of small lsps work with bigger lsps as sort of a, a provider i had no idea this was a massive revelation to me i know okay um, <laughs> <laughs> so we've never done that and we don't really have any intention of doing that um so we work directly with with our clients and we only work with freelancers or translate in-house so we don't work mm. with other lsps yeah. in that sense, um which i think does make us quite unique for such a small agency um but yeah that kind of blew my mind that that was like the standard in the industry that there's like the client and then a big lsp and then a little lsp and then they might outsource to another lsp it's like what um yeah so we're 
quite different. That might give you a bit of a clue on why certain things <laughs> happen, oh, yeah. all right? If you have yeah. sometimes four or five companies right. involved, then, yeah. you know, certain consequences, right? Yeah, so, well, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, certain so consequences we... are inevitable. So yeah. let's talk about something that is my real particular interest that is talent right so you said that you go to your to your people right the people you already know you have a, a wide network of people but uh, the thing is so how many languages do you work with at the moment because your network is only it only goes uh, into a certain especially if you've met these people in the uk and all of that even if the uk yeah. has a lot of variety in terms of languages yeah. but so where what other languages besides what we would expect from the UK? I mean, the French yeah. and the German and the English and all of that. So what other languages do you work with when you, I suppose you have other, a wider variety of languages? At the yeah, moment? so our main languages are sort of the main European languages, I guess you'd say. Um, we also do Japanese, Chinese, Korean sometimes. Not that often, it tends to be more for SEO, keyword research and mm -hmm. specific SEO projects. Um, but generally, it's the main European languages. So our most common is probably, well, German, and then I'd say French, Spanish, Italian, um, Portuguese. Uh, yeah, I guess scan some Scandinavian. Um, it's a bit of a mix, to be honest. Like We've kind of grown, um, like say, organically. Um, we get tr translators when we work with them, um, get them, say, proofread something first and then translate and then get an experienced translator that we know and trust to then proofread. So we kind of get to know translators that way. Um, and we ask the one, the trusted ones, we ask for recommendations if we mm -hmm. need extra mm -hmm. people, which works really well. Um, but we we kind of, it did just grow just through sort of recommendations. Mm -hmm. And then recent, well, I don't, I don't know how long ago it was, we put a job applications thing on our website so people could apply directly by filling out a, a Google form and filling out all their information. Um, and we included sustainability criteria in that. So we want to work with translators who are also committed to reducing their carbon footprint and who are also passionate about sustainability because that's something that's really important to us. And we kind of I'm going to have again, a group of guests to talk about that <laughs> who yeah. are translators. And yes, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, so um, that's like I said before, it's a way of using our influence to have a positive impact. Um, but actually, we've been getting so many applications through this form that we've had to kind of massively limit <laughs> yeah because poor Kate was just having to go through so many um so many applications so Kate but, is like the vendor manager I suppose right yeah in that <laughs> sense yeah um, I yeah. mean Kate, Kate um, brings great people skills so one of the things that Kate is brilliant at is kind of forming relationships with the translators and um mm -hmm. and all that so um that's a big part of it as well mm -hmm. but I have to ask Kitty because I'm very interested in this too What's the story with being okay? You study translate. Well, you study to be a translator. You like that. You love languages. Blah blah blah. Well, what's the story about of being a project manager, right? So, what's the story with that? Because it's it's always very interesting to me when people transition from language work into PMing, right? So, how was it for you? Was it like something you expected to happen? Not expected? You already knew um, it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it was expected um because i started taking on a lot more project management work while i was freelancing and studying at university mm. um and i also did a few modules on project management whilst i was studying and it is it is me like i'm quite good at time management and uh, organization so it very much fits me and my skills so th these days you do more language work or more pming work i guess more pming right more pming yeah um i still have done some translation work whilst i've been working and proofreading as well um and we are looking to increase that as well in the future mm -hmm. but for the time being yeah it's the majority is project management Mm -hmm. So how many freelancers, let's say your pool, as we say in the industry, Kate? <laughs> uh, so how many freelancers do you think you work with on a regular basis? 
Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I would say, I don't know. I mean, I know <laughs> I had to keep track of all the invoices and we changed how people send their invoices. And so I had this really long list, but it was actually in a notebook. So not very well organized, but um, I don't know. I mean, Lucy and Kitty, correct me on this. I'd say between 30 and 50, do you think? Or is that too many? I'd say yeah, that's... I'd say, I'd say yeah. on a regular basis, probably like 20 to 30, but... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the, the kind depends of depends on the language combinations, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So the vast majority of your freelancers will work with German, for example, and something else. No, no, actually, the vast so the vast majority of freelancers are from English into other languages. So English mm. to French is one of the main ones. English to German as well, I guess. But I, I'd say English to French is probably the main one that we do, or the one that we do more than others. And then Spanish, Italian, German, a bit Dutch, Portuguese. Like from uh, from English into these, from English, right? yeah. Because um, so that's kind of what I discovered when the whole Brexit thing was like, okay, I need UK clients. Well, UK clients generally want translation from English into other languages. <laughs> I was right. like, okay, how am I going <laughs> to make sweat sense? This? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> um, so apart from like certified translations, I guess it is pretty much all English into other languages. Mm. Um, so that's why it's kind of that that direction, which unfortunately does mean for Kitty that there's not as much stuff for her to do. So as she said, we're looking to kind of grow out in those markets and try and get more kind the of the other French, way around, right? Into French English. to English and Italian to English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I guess it's, for example, the new trend in subtitling is to do into English, right? Yes, <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> well, yeah. think about these things too much, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you know, if I have the chance to hear people talking about what the needs of the market are and all that, then I'm there because it's, it's very interesting to me because, you know, I really enjoy watching the dance between, you know, what freelance Answers want to do their goals and what they want to do in life and then how you know they can actually forge these relationships with um companies and and have the the life that they want to have so this mm -hmm. is great and i cannot leave without asking this question so you're here because you posted <laughs> so who and why <laughs> posted on LinkedIn that one of their goals for the year of 2024 was to be a guest on a podcast. Over, Over to you, you Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I saw the trend on TikTok to begin with to make a bingo card of goals for the mm -hmm. year. Um, so, so towards the beginning of January, I sat down and I looked at things we've done in the past year and what we could do this year that was achievable um and things that are exciting that we could look forward to and being on a podcast was one of them <laughs> okay so that's it now you're on a podcast what's the story we how do you feel <laughs> <laughs> how is it katie kate <laughs> Being on the podcast, yes, <laughs> yes good. Another another new experience. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's felt um, you've made us feel very relaxed, which is great. Um, it's been nice to chat. It's also just nice hearing again how everyone's got to this point. I mean, I obviously mm. know of Kitty and Lucy, but actually hearing them explain it is is lovely. Yeah, I bet this is why I do it because it's like this is what I want to hear. It's how you know things got to where they are. So that's mm. what's interesting. And then Lucy, how do you feel about you know? presenting about your company and all that but now in this new format yeah no i've really enjoyed it um yeah it's it's been yeah like kate said it is really interesting to hear everyone's story and to kind of um i guess reflect a bit as well about how far we've come and what's next and um yeah no i, I really really enjoyed it it's it's funny like as i was talking before about personal development and growth mm -hmm. like um the thought if you'd said to me like a few years ago you'd be appearing on podcasts and doing like public speaking and all this sort of stuff would be like yeah no chance I was always the person who sat in the room like avoiding eye contact with the teacher like don't ask me a question don't ask me a question don't talk to me <laughs> so, so I do not find it yeah no it's great it's like another another step forward and it yeah it's brilliant yeah, it's a lot of fun. Right, Kitty, our mastermind. And the reason why we're together, actually, it's the joint venture of Kitty, in this case, and my friend Susie Withers, right? Who was, you know, guest on my very first uh, month as a podcaster. So yeah. <laughs> one of the originals. 
Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's why I already had her in the reunion episode, right? So, uh-huh. so close. <laughs> maybe you will come back again if yeah. you liked it. So, you know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kitty, what's the story? How do you feel? Is it worth it? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Or you're like, oh, I've regretted it so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't regretted it. It's been great. Experience. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> when it goes live maybe <laughs> <laughs> no <Next week. laughs> not yet <laughs> yeah it's been great fun I've really enjoyed it thank you yeah for me too so I guess that's it for us and we'll see each other around and good luck for all your projects and your clients and your freelancers and all that it seems like everything is working out perfectly well everybody seems to be happy so I wish you all the best and I'll see you around thank you very thank much you. Bye. Thanks. bye bye guys. Bye.